to me, it's a $64,000 question. I'm not lying to you. Sometimes I sit and I think. And I say to myself, why does it happen to me? Or wh what's the reason? There shouldn't be no reason. Norman is 77 years old. He lives with his wife and two sons, aged 46 and 47. Both of his sons are unemployed and show little interest in finding a job. They have always lived with their parents and are dependent on Norman's income from his Social Security and pension checks. We first taped Norman in a police station a few weeks after he had been severely beaten by one of his sons. This beating was not the first. There had been other beatings going back over a period of five years. So the first thing I knew, I got cracked. I got a black eye. He knocked me on the floor. From Norman Jr.? From Norman Jr., yes. I could have signed a complaint then. But the thing was, if I sign a complaint, I was afraid that when I go home, they're going to beat me up. That's, why, but this That's is why I never signed it, because I figured once I get in the house, I'm done. Yeah. And I know they'd work me over, believe me, and I don't want that no more. I'm tired of that. I had three ribs broke on the left side. Several times, the Senior Services Division of the Chicago Police Department helped Norman find a place to stay and assisted him in getting orders of protection. That's when uh, they sent me to these homes. That's when I first met Norman right. in the emergency room at the hospital. Right. He was, uh, he was brought in there because he used his son Fred's towel by mistake. He was washing his face and he went to dry, dry his face and Fred happened to be walking by and saw his dad using his towel to dry himself and he came in there and he took his head and slammed it into the, into the bowl. Yeah. And he had to have stitches to close his head up. He was just, just battered. But since that, he's he's been out of the house a few times. Yeah, and a few Placed times. in shelters, and and we place him in a couple other places. But he'll he'll run into family members, and they convince him to come back home. I always think it's going to get better, but it only lasts so long. Being completely ostracized from the family, and he has no social life whatsoever, and they take his 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 money, and uh, Norman has to has to work. Uh, few hours a week just to get spending money for himself because they take all his pension and his social security to, to live on. On the third of the month, his family would drive him down to the bank and he'd withdraw that money to pay the rent, rent and to pay yeah. the utilities. I, I don't want to run over here all the time and tell him that I got beat up. I should never get beat up, to be honest with you. I shouldn't run. I'm, that's our furniture, our stuff I work for. It isn't the greatest no more, but it's... It's a hard thing to explain. After this last beating, Norman decided that he would, in fact, press charges. They've been arrested. They posted bond, and they're out on bond until the, until the court. Uh, at the court, they could be found guilty and sentenced uh, to jail. In the past, Norman would leave home after a beating, but would eventually come back. This time, he said, it would be different. If I go back, it'll last so long. And then something will happen again. And maybe they'll kill me one of these days. I couldn't say, but you never know. I don't want to see him put in jail. Let him go home with my wife, and that's it. I'll never go and see him no more. With the help of the police department, a court date had been set. But at the very last minute, Norman decided to drop the charges and, in fact, moved back in with his wife and sons. A few months later, I met and talked with Norman again. And, uh, I says, I want the case dismissed. You had told the judge that? Yes. And don't press charges against the sons. And uh, he told them right out, they're not allowed to touch me. If they do, they'll pick them up, and they will get three to five years, what the judge told them, and uh, they said they would behave themselves. In fact, I've been home, and uh, I don't talk much to them, but uh, they've been behaving themselves. Why did you decide not to, to, uh, to press charges? Well, it's a, it's a hard question to answer, you know. <laughs> uh, I don't want to see him put away, to be honest with you. I've uh, never been in jail myself, and uh, I, they've never been, and I, I don't know. 
maybe I'm chicken hearted or whatever you call it. I just couldn't see it. If it happens again, are you willing to go that step? Yes, I am. Yes. They'll have to learn sooner or later. Why did you decide to go back after you had left the first couple of times? Well, I haven't got any friends, I mean, uh, relations or anything, and it's it's uh, it's not very easy to answer, you know. Uh, I'm 77, or, not, or I will be in a few weeks, and uh, actually, where can you go when you haven't got no friends? You can't walk the streets. What about the senior center? Remember I was telling you, yeah. um, have you uh, made any contacts? I, I haven't made any contact. I, I will, though, and, uh, as soon as the weather gets a little bit better. But the thing is, sometimes they go out, and I got to sit in by myself till they come home. Why, why do you have to stay in? I don't know why. Uh, I guess they're always afraid that somebody's going to get in the house. So if they're out, you have to stay, stay in. Stay in, yeah. yeah. Whether you want to or not. Right, right. How do decisions get made in your house? Who who, who makes the decisions? Well, I guess she does in a way. My wife. It's a very hard time. I guess I'm wondering what kind of feelings you have about your sons. I mean, is there some anger there about what no, they've done? No, it's or? no anger. I don't hold grudges, you know. I mean, yeah, I felt bad at the time, but uh, I'm the type of person that uh, I don't hold grudges against anybody. I mean, I, that's the way I was brought up. And uh, it's, it's a shame that... Uh, things like that really happen, you know. So you don't feel any differently about your sons? At this no, point? no. Did you they, have a close relationship with your with your boys? Yes, I did. Very, very much. Even when they were little, uh, the youngest one, always, when I come home for work, he'd be run down the street and he'd jump in my arms and I'd kiss him and hold him and, and uh, the oldest one, well, we got along real good, but uh, the youngest one, uh, I think, cared more for me than the oldest boy. If you had another option to living with your family, because of the fact that you're still a little afraid that this might happen again, would you choose that option? Or would you just kind of well, take the chance of staying and living stay in, with your Stay and living with my family, yeah. You would, you would do that? Yes. Yeah. It's soon 50 years that I've been married, you know, and... You sit down and you think about it a lot of times to yourself. It's, it's not an easy question to answer. It's not like being with your, you know, your wife and your two sons. I don't like to go. I'd rather stay with them yeah. to the day I pass away. Shortly after this tape was finished, Norman was again beaten by one of his sons and spent three days in the hospital. Two months later, Norman left his family and tried living in a single-room hotel for older adults. He stayed away one night and then decided to go back to live with his family. Norman has been encouraged to get out and socialize at a local senior center. He has also been encouraged to meet with a counselor to help him explore what options and services are available to him. But Norman is getting more frail, and it is harder for him to get around. Moreover, his family, possibly concerned that he will try to leave again, rarely lets him go anywhere by himself. <laughs>